Okay, hello YouTube, and um, this could be my last video on this channel. Um, I've got a new channel called um, Living the God Life. So I might start using that and leave Faithful Philosopher uh, to history. Now, so this is potentially my last video, 365th vid video. As yeah, I was Enoch, and I'm going to try this out. It's something that's been on my mind. Let's see how it goes. So I'm going to read some of the parables that Jesus uh, spoke, and um, we'll skip the first one. The first one is the sower, and I think we all understand that. You've got to have good ground. <clears throat> the wheat and the darnel. Here is another parable that he put before them. The kingdom of heaven is like this. A man sowed his field with good seed, but while everyone was asleep, his enemy came, sowed darnel among the wheat, and made off. When the corn sprouted and began to fill out, the darnel could be seen among it. The farmer's men went to their master and said, Sir, it was not good seed that you sowed in your field. Then where has this darnel come from? This is an enemy's doing, he replied. Well then, they said, shall we go and gather the darnel? No, he answered. In gathering it, you might pull up the wheat at the same time. Let them both grow together till harvest. And at harvest time, I will tell the reapers, Gather the darnel first, and tie it in bundles for burning, then collect the wheat into my barn. Now I feel that the, the first mention of this uh, wheat and chaff parable was actually from John's mouth, John the Baptist. <clears throat> and he put it really succinctly. Yeshua is going to explain it a bit later on. But I'm saying it's about truth and lies. So <clears throat> you could say it's about this book. Um, so you could say that God is saying, no, don't gather the darnel yet. Wait for harvest time. And then the, the darnel will be gathered first. So the lies, the lies will be taken out first. <laughs> Here's one. A mustard seed. And this is another parable that he put before them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. As a seed, the mustard is smaller than any other, but when it has grown, it is bigger than any garden plant. It becomes a tree, big enough for the birds to come and roost among its branches. So, this is about the kingdom of heaven kingdom of heaven, God's realm, you know, where, like, our kingdoms are other people's realms, you know, the leaders, and they're run their way, but God's kingdom is running God's way. So, it's smaller than any other, and the way it's put here, you know, as if to say, If you like, when you get onto the idea of coming into the kingdom of God, it's it's smaller than any other idea than you could decide to do. You decide to be do something else, and that's that appears as though it might be more important, more more bigger. But in fact, the kingdom of heaven is will will end up being much bigger to the point where birds can roost among its branches and it can it can be a sanctuary or something. <laughs> so, I mean, like I haven't yeah, I'll just shut up. Yeast. He told them this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast, which a woman took and mixed with half a hundredweight of flour till it was all leavened. So it raised. So I guess 
yeast takes time you know and if you didn't have any of the yeast and you just had a half a hundred weight of flour and see with water it would just remain like nothing even though there's wild yeast in the air right so you know you have this little bit of little bit of yeast and you and you leave your dough mixture there and throughout the day it grows so the kingdom of heaven grows I guess. In all this teaching to the crowds, Jesus spoke in parables. In fact, he never spoke to them without a parable. Very wise if you're speaking to a crowd who aren't really going to understand your things. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret since the world was made. So he's going to explain the wheat and the darnel. Then he dismissed the people and went into the house where his disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the darnel in the field. And this was his answer. The sower of the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the children of the kingdom. The darnel for the children of the evil one. The enemy who sowed the darnel is the devil. The harvest is the end of time. The reapers are angels. As the darnel then, it is gathered up and burnt, so that at the end of time the Son of Man will send out his angels, who will gather out of his kingdom whatever makes men stumble, and all whose deeds are evil. And these will be thrown into the blazing furnace, the place of wailing and grinding of teeth. And then the righteous will shine as brightly as the sun, in the kingdom of the father of their father if you have ears then hear now i think people have taken this explanation and they've and they've kind of made it into a sort of a you know it's them against us and you know there are evil evil people evil people. I don't think there are evil people. Now it says that the children of the evil one. Now previously I've spoken about this and I've just said well maybe Yeshua just got it wrong. But uh, comment. I was commenting on a friend of mine who's got a YouTube channel called Truth Seeker. He's just starting it out. And he made the point that you know we needed to know evil you know which is absolutely true so evil had to be present we had to engage with evil we had to do it a few times you know you had to you had to do it a few times because i made a point yeah we should know it but it doesn't mean we should do it you know because a lot of people they go oh yeah you know like there's no difference between good and evil yin and yang it's all just you know you've got to have dark and if Otherwise, everything would just be white and you wouldn't be able to see anything without dark and stuff like that. But ultimately, we're not, that's not our goal. Our, ultimately, our goal is to, to do good and loving things because love begets more love. And that's, so once you learn that and you've encountered evil a bit and you've done a bit of evil and you've realised, yeah, you do a bit of evil and that evil... It, it will come back on you, you know, you will... And that's what we know... That's why once you know a bit about good and evil you won't want to do evil uh, I just wondered if I could quickly find the way John puts it um, um Sorry about this. Ah, oh, here we go, yeah. I am not fit to take on his shoes. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. His shovel is ready in his hand and he will winnow his threshing floor. The wheat he will gather into his granary, but he will burn the chaff on a fire that can never go out. I think it's probably in Luke or John where uh, it's put a bit differently. But if you look here, his shovel is ready in his hand and he will winnow 
his threshing floor. And I think I think it talks in the other one is winnowing fork and his threshing floor. So it did it did sound like when John's saying it that the the separation of the wheat and chaff is in his threshing floor. Now, they might be talking about separate things. To me, it sounds like John is making a prophecy of a time in the future. And I did sometimes feel that was me, right? Did. And that I've been winnowing <laughs> the wheat and the chaff in my threshing floor, which basically what I've been doing, if my threshing floor is my mind, and I've been reading the Bible, I've read the whole thing before, and um, deciding what is good and what is not, and that's, that's, I'm allowed to do that. Okay. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven is like treasure, lying buried in a field. The man who found it, buried it again and for sheer joy went and sold everything he had and bought that field. So I guess you say it's, it's important, but interesting there that he, he buried it again, the man who found it. Well, uh, <laughs> don't know about that one. Here is another picture of the kingdom of heaven. A merchant looking out for fine pearls found one of very special value. So he went and sold everything he had and bought it. I guess the point of these two here is that when you find it, when you stumble onto the mustard seed at the beginning, it may seem like, you know, nothing, nothing else matters after that point. It is all important. And I've definitely found that in my own life. Like, about four years ago, I would say I found that mustard seed and um, yeah it puts everything else in perspective you know it's just other stuff just becomes not important a net of full fish again the kingdom of heaven is like a net let down into the sea where fish of every kind were caught in it when it was full, it was dragged ashore. Then the men sat down and collected the good fish into pails and threw the worthless away. That is how it will be at the end of time. The angels will go forth and they will separate the wicked from the good and throw them into the blazing furnace, the place of wailing and grinding of teeth. So, you know, again, I was saying, you know, knowing that God is an all-loving God, you know, either this is a way of uh, um, trying to motivate people to do good, I don't know, it's possible, like, I don't consider that Yeshua was absolutely perfect, I don't think he was God, as some do, so it may well have been a, a motivational thing, but, or it could be that the angels will come and when they separate the wicked from the good again it's going to be the stumbling blocks that are put there for us so we take um, the reason that we had to have evil in the world we had to know it we had to encounter it so if this period in our soul's life is about this this dealing with you know being so sort of being given free will right so perhaps we haven't had an awful lot of free will before or we've been quite restrained living lives as animals you know there was only so much you could do uh, but now as humans there's a lot more we can do we can sort of hurt people more and oh, you can hurt more people and stuff like that so you know that was that would be because it doesn't specify whether they're people or anything so if we get to a point where they talk about the end of time where we have now um, no more need for evil in the world because we all now have learnt that lesson. 
Have you understood all this? he asked. And they answered, Yes! said to them, When, therefore, a teacher of the law has become a learner in the kingdom of heaven, he is like a householder who can produce from his store both the new and the old. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> what else to say on that? When he had finished his parables, he came to his hometown. Where does he get his wisdom from, these miraculous powers? Is he not the carpenter's son? A prophet will always be held in honour, except in his hometown and his own family. Seems true to me. Uh, did I miss some parables? Alright, I'm going to move on. Now, I want to go to John. Because I think some of the most bizarre things that Yeshua says is in John. Okay, so I mean, really just need to read the whole thing, don't you? He washes the feet, not to judge, but to save. So Jesus cried aloud, When a man believes in me, he believes in him who sent me rather than in me. Seeing me, he sees him who sent me. I have come into the world as light, so that no one who has faith in me should remain in darkness. But if anyone hears my words and pays no regard to them, I am not his judge. I have come to judge, I have not come to judge the world but to save the world. There is a judge for the man who rejects me and does not accept my words. The word that I spoke will be his judge on the last day. I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who sent me has himself commanded me what to say and how to speak. I know that his commands are eternal life. What the Father has said to me Therefore, this is what I speak. So he's channeling. He's definitely channeling. The world's hatred of Jesus. If the world hates you, it hated me first, as you know well. If you would belong to the world, the world would not love its own. But because you do not belong to the world, because I have chosen you out of the world, for that reason the world hates you. He's speaking to his disciples. Remember what I said, a servant is not greater than his master. As they pers persecuted me, they will persecute you. They will follow your teaching as little as they have followed mine. It is on my account that they will treat you as thus, because they do not know the one who sent me. They don't know God. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father. If I had not worked among them and accomplished what no other man has done, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. However, this text in their law has to come true. They hated me with re without reason. Their law, the, the Old Testament, yeah. 
Yeah. You know. There's a lot of words in this book. And you could have one line, ten words, that has three layers of meaning. There's a lot of words. It's going to be very ambiguous which ones you choose. It's impossible. That's why, for me personally, you know, I wanted to read it. I wanted to read the whole thing to know what was in it. And, you know, when you've read Jesus' words, you know, some of the plainest ones, love your enemy, and you consider how few people still today actually practice that. And... Um, <clears throat> But no one can be claim ignorance and say, oh, I didn't know, because it's it's been in common knowledge long enough. So, yeah. Yeah. Right, well, like I said, I'll be, I think I'm going to do this. I just leave it, 365 videos. In a sense, I should be incensed raging crazy that my videos haven't picked up more interest <laughs> but I understand there are some reasons for that and um, it is as it's meant to be so it must be part of God's plan that that was the way it's meant to be so I'm going to, this is what I think I'm going to do so I think I'm going to just leave the channel as it is um, leave it to history and um Move on, move on up, yeah, move on up. So, the channel's called Living the God Life, if you want to continue hearing my stuff. Alright, ciao.